Hello there, family and friends. Um, my name is Michelle Kyles, and I would like to welcome you to the virtual memorial homegoing celebration service for Herman Williams. Just to share a little bit about myself, I've been best friends, more like sisters to, to Tamika Williams, who is now Tamika Young, one of Herman's daughters for over 20 years. I was asked to facilitate today's service virtually and I was so happy and glad to do it. I love her and the family and feel honored to be a part of this important occasion on today. Now I know that doing this type of event virtually can feel a bit different, but as we travel these uncharted waters together, it is the family's prayer that we all feel a sense of comfort, closeness, hope, and encouragement. I will guide us through today's virtual experience as your moderator. So before we get started, just as a reminder, um, please take a moment now to share this live broadcast with any of your friends or family members who would like to watch this experience live with us. You can share this on your Facebook page if you're watching Facebook or share the YouTube link with anyone that does not have Facebook. The YouTube link is at the top of the post on Facebook and being shared in the comment section now. So thank you for sharing. Now, let us begin with prayer. Um, we're gonna have Melanie Lee that's gonna lead us in prayer and scripture. Melanie, are you ready? I'm ready. Awesome. Amen, hallelujah, Amen. hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, although this has been a week where we've grieved, where we've mourned, where we thank you, Father, that today we can find gratitude in you. We thank you for being a God who loves, a God who sees, a God who provides, a God who heals, a God who comforts, a God who speaks, a God who loves. We thank you, Father, for the life of Herman Williams. We thank you, Father, that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We thank you that he is with you, Father God, experiencing glory, ready to receive the fullness of a job well done. We thank you that he lived for you, Lord. We thank you for the ways that he taught us to see you, to speak to you in prayer, to praise you. We thank you for the joy, the comfort, the love, the laughs, the teachings that this great man of God poured out on everyone in his path. We thank you for his entire life and the lessons it brought. We thank you that he lived for you. We thank you that he taught many of us how to live for you. We thank you that today will be a day that the words of the speakers and the words of comfort from the Holy Spirit will pour onto the family, to the friends, and to the co-laborers in Christ to comfort, bring peace, restore joy and invoke memories that inspire, heal, and make our hearts smile. We submit this time to you, Holy Father. We surrender to your will and your way today. Thank you for giving us space to celebrate the life of a great husband, father, grandfather, brother, uncle, cousin, friend, and pastor. We thank you most of all for his complete and total healing and restoration in you, oh God. We love you so much. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 And I'm going to be reading 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8 from the Amplified Version. It reads, love endures with patience and serenity. Love is kind and thoughtful and is not jealous or envious. Love does not brag and is not proud or arrogant. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not provoked nor overly sensitive and easily angered. It does not take into account a wrong endured. It does not rejoice at injustice, but rejoices with the truth when right and truth prevail. Love bears all things, regardless of what comes, believes all things, looking for the best in each one, hopes all things remaining steadfast during difficult times, endures all things without weakening. Love never fails. It never fades nor ends. But as for prophecies, they will pass away. 
As for tongues, they will cease. As for the gift of special knowledge, it will pass away. I've read to you 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8 from the Amplified Version. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his most holy word. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Melanie. That was so powerful. It's amazing how it still resonates just through the screen. So thank you for that powerful prayer in scripture. And right now we're going to move right along into song by Minister Dimitri Turner and Elder Christy Sturkill with a selection of How Great. Thank you so much, Minister Dimitri Turner 
and Elder Christy Stark here for that beautiful selection. How great is our God? It's awesome. Um, right now, we're going to keep moving where we have sharing of memories um, with friends from Melvin Jackson and Jarvis Driver. I will praise God from whom all blessings flow. I would like to say with mixed emotions, I'm happy to be a part of this celebration of my big brother. While I am most saddened by his departure, uh, I'm here to honor his memory and celebrate his life. He may be gone and will genuinely be missed, but we do have fun memories of him with us that we will never lose. Um, as we celebrate, all heaven celebrates a soldier, a soldier. Herman was a soldier. Even David the psalmist wrote, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. But what can I say about Herman, Herman Lee? Uh, we laughed and joked many times he called, called him the Hermanator. First of all, it was his idea for uh, me to even come to California. I wouldn't even been here if it hadn't have been for him. He said these were mellow, mellow, man, let's go to Los Angeles, it's the place. It was like the gold rush. We was coming out here to get rich. Came out here with a briefcase full of lyrics and music. He was the songwriter. Uh, and he and Jarvis was the singers and I was the keyboard player. Yes, sir. We were destined to be famous in the music industry. But God, God knew better. Because we can have plans, but God have uh, better plans. He knows our ways. And I don't know if it's appropriate or not to say this, but we knew each other formally on the other side of the cross and, of course, on this side of the cross. But one thing that was very constant in his life was his love for the word of God. We could be riding down the street, walking uh, down the street on the bus, or, but he was always talking scriptures, breaking down scriptures. He loved the word of God. And then many of you all didn't know him as an intercessor, but he would walk and talk for the ministry he was involved in, four-hour intervals, praying scripture and praying in the spirit. And then with that enthusiasm, he came to our church over on Figueroa Street here and lives and taught for weeks on intercessory prayer and got our church so uh, excited about prayer that we ourselves began to pray on shifts every Friday, midnight until the next day, Saturday. Closing at noon. Yes. Irma could pray like Paul and had a voice like a trumpet. He always had a song on his lips. He, Jarvis, and myself would sing. Well, they would sing. I was just there. We would sing up and down Crenshaw, sing everywhere we went. Just a little story as I closed. My daughter Brittany told me the other night that when she called him, it was about five years ago, it's for a surprise homecoming that the church had planned on my behalf, the members of the church began to tell her, girl, you better get ready because your Uncle Herman going to have a lot of scriptures for you to call <laughs> when you call. And guess what? That he did. Well, all in all, he loved God. He loved God's word. He loved praying in the spirit. And yes, surely he loved his wife, loved his daughters, and always talked about his grandchildren to me. And you better know he loved this church and his pastor. So I say to my brother, well, you came out here first, then I followed. Now you done went to heaven. I don't know when I'm coming, but I'll see you on the other side. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God, hallelujah, praise God. We are here today in honor of my friend, my big brother, Herman William, nickname Huck, very heroic name, he a man with many, many talents. We come from a long ways together. 
We were down in Memphis, Tennessee. We attended the same home church. We graduated from the same high school, although it was a difference in age. He was our big brother. He was three years older than me. And here I am along with Pat and all of us that understand him and loved him. Last time I talked to him, I told him how much I loved him and he told me how much he loved me. We continue because we know that in this fight, on this life, what we have learned at our churches and our teachers, all the way to his daddy with a smile. Herman had that same smile, loving spirit. I remember so many wonderful things. We had way more good times than we had bad times. We came through happy times, sad times, joyous times. Just like Mel said, Herman made it out before we did to California. We made it there and I came out after Mel. <laughs> I was the one last one to get here. We sang about what we knew and we knew about Christ and we knew about God. We knew about love. We come from a place where people loved us, they taught us and we became men. Oh, my brother, I made plans. <laughs> I wanted to go and have dinner. That's what I talked to him. I told him, Mel and I had to Pam, along with his wife, Elizabeth. I was looking forward for us at dinner, but it's not to be, but God had bigger plans for him. At the same time, I wouldn't be the person I am without his friendship. He taught me a lot in his ways. I admired him. He was a great athlete. He was a determined guy to get the job done. Nothing could stop that hook. No, he was a wonderful, wonderful guy, and I love him. I'm gonna miss him, miss him. And I want to tell the family, Elizabeth, and all of y'all, just continue. You know the road. Continue on the road, and we know we'll see him again. This ain't the end. Uh, just to give you an idea, he's God's preacher, he's God's teacher, he's God's singer and songwriter. Well, remember, this is not a song that he wrote. And I'm, I'm not going to be long because I can be pretty long. I know I can go. Everybody <laughs> know I can go for a while. I was a talker and I was a crybaby and I was a lover among us, us all able to keep us together because what God had taught us. Love is the true glue which keeps us together. There was a song he wrote called Constantly Searching. Hallelujah. Eagerly waiting. Hungrily moving, joyously anticipating. My mind is ever expanding at this point. Don't know what the marvel's going to bring. Many explanations for the way that it seems, but it's out of my hand. I know he understands at this point in my life. This is his attitude wide open. That's how I'm taking it. Sometimes skipping and crawling. That's how I'm making it. But it's out of my hand and I know he'll understand at this point. My friend fought a good fight. He's finished his course. And when that great day get here, we'll see him again. Love you guys. Continue. God is great all the time. It's nothing impossible. Just continue to depend on him. Have a good one. Thank you for your time. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. <clears throat> yes, Thanks. Yes. Thank you so much, Melvin Jackson and Brother Jarvis Driver. To be friends 50 plus years, it's an honor. Yes, and sir. those are powerful words. So thank you so much for You're sharing welcome. your thoughts. Yes, um, sir. Right now, we're going to continue to move on. Um, this is Trent Cobbs coming up. He's in Hamilton High School, class of 1969 alumni, and it's going to share some thoughts as being a friend. Go ahead, Trent. All right. Two of uh, the pastors and clergy who may be in attendance uh, doing this memorial home going service to friends as well as family. I greet you in the mighty name of God Almighty. We are saddened yet celebrating the death of Herman Williams, better known as Huck. That name has already been mentioned. He and I have been friends uh, literally all of our life. 
I'm talking about first through the 12th grade uh, in one school, Hamilton, Hamilton Elementary. We started elementary and finished high school. Uh, class of 1969, one of the greatest classes that went through that school at that time. <laughs> uh, when uh, we were younger, we played basketball on Saturday, early Saturday morning, in fact, uh, when uh, Mr. Uh, Hawkins would open the gym at 7 or 8 a.m. And we played all day until he kicked us out or closed us at 4 p.m. Now, we would stop uh, during the, the noon hour. Uh, he would close the gym up for us to, uh, to, to go, but we would run home uh, to get something to eat, or either we would go up to Miss Hazel's store, and Miss Hazel's store was at the corner of Pillow and Ethelin, which is a street, Ethelin is a street in which uh, Huck lived on. But we would run home to get something to eat, or go to, like I said, Miss Hazel's store to get something, and what we would do at Miss Hazel's store, we would, we would actually buy some uh, crackers and bologna, or hot sauce, or goose liver, <laughs> moon pies, and cookies, and a jumbo drink. And look, if you had 25 cents or 30 cents, you could get just about all of that. That's, those were the times, and they were wonderful times. During those days also, Huck and I uh, were about the same height and about the same skinny, <laughs> if you will. Then all of a sudden, Huck shot up. He got taller. He grew to about 6'2", six, 6'3", six, so because when I finished school, I imagine that was his height. Uh, when I finished school, uh, I was like 5'8". And that 6'2", six, 6'3", six, was tall, still is for that matter. But uh, uh, he played uh, uh, basketball, varsity basketball, and he was a pretty good player. In addition to that, he also played baseball, and he was very good at playing second base as well as shortstop. Now, now uh, Huck had a sense of humor. You know, he would tell jokes. I mean, good, clean jokes, folks. OK, good, clean jokes. <laughs> and he would beat all of us laughing. Sometimes the jokes really weren't that funny, but the, the, he made funny faces. And those expressions were such that we all would get a big laugh out of it. We had a wonderful time. Also, in those earlier days, we would go to Huck's parents' house and listen to those 33 uh, uh, vinyl records uh, on their record player. Uh, some of you all may be too young to understand that. But on those record players, we would listen to Diana Ross. We listened to The Temptations, uh, The Dales, Martha and the Vandellas, Lou Ross, all of those things. We just had a wonderful time doing things like that. And also during those days, we had lots of wholesome fun, even at house parties. Uh, great times. Huck was really uh, a very humble guy, even when we were growing up. You know, and even back in those days, he valued family and friends. All right. And in closing, I miss my friend. As you can tell, we had wonderful times growing up in those days. And yes, someone just said it. Tuck has now gone home. And it's all right to go home when you have a home to go to. So to the family. I pray you will find comfort knowing that Huck is home now, free, at peace, in the presence of God. God blessings be with you. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Cobb, for your wonderful words. You write, for us to have a home to go to is what's key. And so thank you for those wonderful words. Um, we're going to continue to move forward. Right now, we're going to have Pastor Joseph and Minister Melissa come up and share their thoughts and views on their friend. Praise the Lord. Uh, what a wonderful day it is to be included in this virtual memorial service for Pastor Herman William by his wife, Elizabeth, Elder Elizabeth, his daughters, Miss Tamika, Minister Dr. Tradisha. I'm truly honored. I will talk to the man who served the Lord with me. As a fellow soldier, a fellow laborer, a man who, whose heart was so completely out for God. He was truly a soldier 
in God's army. And he was dedicated to kingdom principles. He tried to evangelize Jesus to every person he met, wherever he met them, with laughter, with great zeal, and with joy. He turned the prayer room into a battlefield for the Lord. As an intercessor, he stood in the gap for many, as Minister Melissa will testify to. And he always lit up when we pray, pray, you know, played the song or sung this song at church. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. You couldn't help but admire and marvel at his beautiful voice. What a man he was. Gentle, humble, but yet strong. And I'm also reminded of the fact that no matter what Pastor Herman did, if he was preaching, if he was exhorting God, if he was raising an offering in the church, if he was just ministering in any way, form or fashion, he will always find a way to incorporate the scripture in Isaiah 65 and 8. Mm -hmm. And there's four points in that scripture. New wine, cluster, don't destroy it because there's a blessing in it. And I believe he did that because of the warrior that he was. He did that because he knew the body of Christ needed each other to survive. Just as his friends from his youth have testified to. He would be the tie that bind. He was a man given to always being on his knees and on his face, exhorting the Lord. And finally, Pastor Herman could run. I cannot tell you how many times he ran the aisles of Bible enrichment. You could not run him because when that spirit came on to, uh, upon him, he would just take off. You just needed to follow. But you couldn't overtake him. But on Saturday, February 27, he ran his final race. He won it. Now, I truly believe that he's taking a victory lap on the street of the four square city, the city of gold. So to Elder Elizabeth, Tamika, Trinisha and every member of the family take heart at this that your husband and your father and your grandfather sees Jesus truly as he is and he is at rest. God bless you all. Amen. Praise God, Pastor Ito and to all of you uh, family and friends, it's a privilege and an honor to uh, remember this great man of God who Pastor Herman was the leader over intercessory prayer at Bible Enrichment Fellowship International Church in Inglewood. Awesome, awesome, awesome man. And truly he will be missed when he prayed. I'm just to hear a man pray, period. But when he prayed, it was like rivers of living water just flowing out of his belly, just a perpetual flow. And so it was an honor to serve under him. Um, the intercessory prayer leaders are always asking about him. Millie just asked about him about a month ago. 
when is Pastor Herman coming back? You know, um, Deacon Rita, they, they all love him, Arvis. And um, we're going to miss him preaching and teaching to the glory of God. And when he really got into it, he'll start banging on the podium it, when it got real good to him. We'll miss his singing. Um, we'll miss his happy dance, Joy and I. We're, we'll, we'll miss him, period. And like Pastor Ito said, Pastor Herman was famous for preaching on uh, the blessing in the cluster, Isaiah 65 and 8. In fact, I wrote his name next to that scripture because can't nobody preach that like him. And I, I just, I'm so grateful to be before you today just to say that now he's a, a royal cluster in heaven. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And I'll miss his kind, kind, sweet, sweet spirit. He was always respectable to both men and women. And it was a privilege uh, just to speak before you today. Thank you for your time. And thank you, Pastor Joseph and Minister Melissa. Um, just again, for those wonderful words. And I, I, to be, you know, I haven't been, didn't have the opportunity to actually get to know Pastor Herman personally, but through your words is just powerful. Um, especially Pastor Joseph, when you talked about he's always on his knees and um, on his face, those are powerful words. So again, thank you so much for those beautiful words. Um, right now we're gonna continue to move forward and we're gonna move on to, let's see here. Ms. Trenisha Williams has a special presentation from the family, um, Pastor Herman's daughter. So to you, Trenisha. Hey, church fam, uh, it's Tree, Dr. Tree. Um, I was going to, I'm going to share an actual poem um, that my oldest sister wrote because she has like the gift of poetry. Um, and it all kind of just focuses on really great points in the life of our dad to us um, and who daddy was to us. And so as a lot of people said um, from his past, um, like his uh, school friends and and anyone from Memphis knew daddy as Huck. And so when he moved to California and married my mom, uh, my sister from my mom's first marriage would call him Huck daddy. And then I'm the youngest sister and whatever my big sister did, I followed. And so we used to call him Huck daddy. And so um, this poem is titled, Is Huck Daddy? But give me one second, cause I'm not sure if I'm supposed to share the screen or not. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start. Oh, okay, there it is, perfect. Thank you guys so much, I love y'all. And if you guys don't know, my, my other sister is also in charge of the whole service right now. She's like totally awesome with the tech stuff. Anyway, um, so with that said, this one says, is Huck Daddy? All right, go into the next slide. So is Huck Daddy Aquaman? He swam the ocean to that boat. Now he's lying on the waves. How can he sleep and float? And so this particular memory deals with my dad. So I don't know if y'all really understood daddy, but daddy thought that he could do practically anything, like anything you put your mind to. And so one time uh, he was at the beach and he saw these sailboats, like, like probably like a mile or two away um, at the beach. And he looked at my mom and he said, you know what? I'm gonna get one of those sailboats. And he swam all the way there. By the time he got there, the sailboats were gone, but he swam so far that the lifeguards came and followed him because they thought that he would not make it all the way back. But daddy does not play. He has super duper incredible faith. <laughs> and like it, he is always this remembrance to me of the fact that no matter how, how, how impossible something may seem, you can still reach that. And I think that as, as his daughter, I've taken on a lot of that. Um, and it goes back to the verse, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so one daddy loved the beach, but he had incredible faith. Um, and so that's what this first part of this particular poem is. And then our next one is, uh, is Huck Daddy the Bionic Man? 
what is in his knees? We've been skating for four hours. I'm ready to leave, circa 1980. And so daddy loved to skate. And as a lot of people said, daddy loved running at church, okay? It would be to the point where we're like, how did you get so much energy, dude? Like, I don't even understand. I would sit back in amazement on like, as soon as the spirit hit, daddy be gone. Um, and he always had so much energy um, and that not only like um, it wasn't just in church, but it was also at home. Daddy was the best playmate ever. <laughs> like just as a kid, I would literally listen for him at the door when he was coming from work after working a long, hard day where he walked around selling cable, knocking on doors for like, you know, hours. And I would wait and I would hide from him. And he loved it when I would come home and hide. And then he would find me. And it was every single day. Like it, a day did not go by that I did not find another hiding place in my house from my daddy. But he was like the greatest playmate. Um, and so and he never got tired. I think that's the biggest thing about this. Like, is daddy the bionic man? because I don't know how much energy this guy actually has because we're super tired, but he's not. And then going to our next part of today's poem as well, is Huck Daddy a Vulcan? Okay, y'all don't know about them Vulcans, but I'm gonna tell you, okay? He promises movies for uh, four volumes of Star Trek. Uh, man, daddy, each movie is three hours long. What the heck? Hey, y'all, let's go, let's jet. So real quick on this one, my dad loved movies. Like, oh my gosh, certain movies he would play over and over and over and over again. Star Trek was one of them, but his ultimate, one of his ultimate favorite movies was The Gladiator. Um, and if you guys can't see in the picture, there's actually a screenshot of my dad on the face of The Gladiator. Um, my nephews will tell you that my dad played this movie like every day. And that's the reason why they know about the gladiator um, is because of that. Um, and so he loved movies and he really loved movies that had like a hero or a main character that was the underdog. Cause I think daddy sometimes felt like he was the underdog, but the underdog underdog that like actually created a whole bunch of power. So gladiator, he may be the underdog, he may be a slave, but he won in the end, okay? And he had lots and lots of strength. Um, another one of his favorite movies was uh, the 10 commandments. And in the 10 commandments, uh, it's, you know, Moses, he was the underdog, but he came in. Woo, did, boy, did Moses come in, okay? Uh, setting the children of Israel free. And so all these things remind us of daddy. And then the next part of this poem, it says, how did daddy know that um, that night we got into stuff? 6 a.m., he woke me up for church. He said, sit here and don't move. Now I'm here in church, tired and stuck. So daddy did not play around when he came to church. Just putting out like daddy, okay, if you know daddy, you know daddy loves church. Just in general, there's not a day at church that he wouldn't miss unless he just wasn't feeling well. And that was just later at the end of his life. But daddy was always at church no matter what. And so were we. If we stayed up to six at night, God knows what, doing whatever it was that we were doing the night before. Daddy did not care. He'd look at us and be like, okay, it's time to go to church. <laughs> and so uh, daddy did not play, but he never judged you though. It wasn't like, oh, you've been doing crazy stuff at home. You got to go to church. It was just like, hey, it's time for church. Let's go. And so I love that about daddy and how how forgiving he was and how non-judgmental my father was, like never judgmental. Um, Cause he knew that he did things that probably weren't the greatest and that um, we all fall short, but the glory of God. And so he never judged people. And I think that's why he loved so hard because he knew like his life wasn't always the greatest and there was always these up and down moments, but God was always faithful and merciful to him. Um, and he wanted to show that same love and mercy to others. Um, and so I love that about my dad. Um, and then going to the next one, is Huck Daddy a Jedi? Sorry, I love me some Star Wars. Uh, somebody slipped him a superpower. Must be a Jedi mind trick. How does he get the kids to sit and listen for more than an hour? Circa tw uh, 2012. So if you can see the picture here, the big one of the congregation of people that was at Christmas a few years back. Um, but daddy used to love to give like these or like he was like a great orator. I know you guys, a lot of you guys know him as a preacher, but he'd do the same thing at home with us. So if we have like Christmas, daddy's like giving like this orating speech that just captivates everyone. Um, there's also a picture of there um, at best um, at our Bible enrichment school of theology where daddy um, actually graduated as valedictorian and he gave a speech um, and daddy always gave speeches at my birthdays and he always start them off with like hear ye hear ye it was so hilarious and super captivating because he kind of had or he was I guess you would say that Baptist preacher so it was almost like you know so enthralling like whoa daddy this is pretty good even though we're just talking about me turning 25. Um, and so I love that about him. Um, and he always had everyone's attention. And then our next part, it says, is Huck Daddy Superman? 
I'm gonna say that one more time. Is Huck Daddy Superman? Uh, somebody told me he flew in the air at church. He probably did leap, twirl at a quick rate. I, I believe he did it because he emerges from the kitchen with miracle plates. I promise the food he comes out with, we don't see none. Of that red pepper, those plate flowers, that designer fruit ain't in the fridge. Where's Hug Daddy pulling this stuff from? And so for us, Daddy, honestly, even though I tell you that he believed he could do anything, like I honestly believe like my dad was like a Superman, just to be honest. Um, the one reference in this one, um, maybe some people remember, but one time my dad, instead of running, he leaped. I'll never forget it. Like he leaped so far that I think it was like a little boy in this in the <laughs> in church looked at his mom and was like that man is flying mommy <laughs> and so uh, he, he would just get into the spirit and it's like one of my favorite memories of daddy at church was when he leaped um and then also a big favorite memory about dad is um that whole idea of he would always make something out of nothing even when he even came to like food um a lot of times daddy would go into the refrigerator we all look and say hey there's nothing in there and then daddy comes out with like a five course meal. And so we used to call the miracle place because only daddy can make a miracle plate because he was a miracle worker, Jesus. Um, and so I love that about daddy. Um, and then last thing about this, daddy um, really praised unabashedly, especially with the leaping in church. I don't think you ever meet anybody that will worship daddy, like worship God, um, like my dad. Uh, he had no fear. He had no shame. He came there to praise God, um, whether it meant running or leaping in the church. That's what he would do because God was so good and faithful to him um, and to his family. And then the last part of the poem says, I think her daddy is extraterrestrial. He had every type of cell phone. I think he used one we haven't seen yet. I think he phoned home. I think he's home circa today. And so I just wanted to give a quick thing uh, after this poem, which is so great. And I, I thank my sister for writing this. Um, it's such a good um, recap of all the things that we loved about my father. Um, and so as we honor my dad, I just wanted to give a couple of um, a Bible verse because I cannot talk about Jesus and read a Bible verse. Uh, as talking about my dad, because, you know, my father was very much into the word of God. Um, and so I just wanted to um, one thing that really popped into me as I was thinking about what to say at my dad's eulogy um, or as a part of this particular eulogy um, is that my father um, is an example of second chances maybe even third, fourth, fifth and sixth chances. If you think about it, actually, if you really know him well, um, as anybody, daddy was not always the greatest of people, just in general. Like that's just how we are, which is, as I said before, is why he never condemned people for what they did. And I think that's an important message to tell people because my father finished his race well. Um, there is a song that says, your ladder will be greater than your rest, than the rest. Um, and for my dad, his ladder was so much greater than the rest. And because he stayed faithful to God, he, even when he messed up y'all, he always went back to God, always repented back to God, every single, it didn't matter. And he knew who he was even in the mess up. I'm gonna say that one more time. He knew who he was even in the mess up. He never forgot who he was in Christ. You'd ask dad, even with, I'm just gonna let you know, if he was high out of his mind, he'd be like, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus in the midst of it, okay? I'm just putting that out there to y'all. Like that's some serious, and he knew, like this is, this is something that it was deep on the inside of him. And I say that to you because you too are great. Everyone on here, everybody on here is the righteousness of God. No matter if you took a hit of something three minutes ago to get on this screen, you are still the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus because God has called you to be great. I'm gonna say that one more time. God has called you to be great and he is a God of mercy. It, it doesn't matter what you do as long as you remember who you are and whom you are. And so I say that to you as an example of my father, Herman Williams, which a lot of you guys know, um, and some of y'all don't know his struggles. I'm gonna say that one more time. Some of you guys don't know his struggles and I know his struggles because I'm his daughter. But at the end of the day, my daddy, when he died, just putting that out there to you, he died with love in his heart, with his family all around him, y'all. 
uh, in a house that was bought, built or bought by his own daughter. It was like that whole Moses uh, situation. When you go to the promised land, daddy was there and he got to see it, y'all. Like, just like, and he was happy and he was excited on the way. Every day, daddy said he was blessed. And again, remember, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And so I see these things to you um, because you are never less than. And daddy's such an example of that. Even if you feel like you've done things wrong and you keep on doing the same thing over and over and over again wrong, um, that you don't change. Like you don't, God, God's perception of you does not change. He sees the goodness in you. He sees the greatness that he has instilled in you when you were in your mother's womb. So don't forget that. Don't beat yourself up. Keep on remembering who you are in Christ. Keep on repenting because God loves you and everything about you. I'm gonna say that again. God loves you and everything about you because he made you. And so I'm gonna go and end this with Psalm 46. Um, because it talks about strength. And I think that with my father, um, again, the God of second chances, my dad is an example of second chances, that those second chances come when you, you on the inside, you know that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You have this strength and you just, you just know that God loves you no matter what. And so I just want to end this, especially given the times that we live in right now um, with the pandemic and all this other things um, that God is always with you and he is your comfort, just like he's always been my comfort as well. So I'm at Psalms 46 and I'm just going to read the whole chapter. It's not super long. Um, so it says, God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. He is in the midst of her, shall, she shall not be removed or moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord who has made desolations in the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. And so just know that God is with you no matter where you are in your life, no matter what struggles you're having right now. And he is your refuge, y'all. And just cling to that. Love you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. I mean, that was awesome. You know, and someone had just commented saying his ministry is evident in your ministry, you preaching and you said some powerful things and just beautiful inside and out about your father and Huck Daddy. I enjoyed all the stories. I was like, man, this is cool seeing the presentation. So great job. And again, um, beautiful, beautiful. So thank you so much, Dr. Tree, for that. And we're going to continue to move right along. And this time we're going to move right into the reading of the obituary.
Thank you. I believe that is it. Right now, we're going to continue to move forward um, with our words and comfort and closing prayer by none other than the beautiful Apostle Crawford. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You've done a great job at uh, moderating above all things. I want to say to the family that you are such a blessing. I mean, all throughout the ministry, I see where your footprint and your handprint is so visible, you know, with the prayer ministry, the prison ministry, then pathway, and then Bible study, and teaching, and the school. And I think that says a lot for the entire family involvement, Herman, and Elizabeth, and Latanya, and, and Tree, and now I got to meet Jakari, too. So that's full circle for me, and I'm so thankful to God. Herman is the type of guy for me as a pastor, as a leader, leading a flock of people and mentoring and training leaders. Uh, he was easy, when I say easy, because he already loved God. But the most important thing, I believe, most important loving God, but he loved people. And to be the kind of leader that Herman was and have a kind of, as my daughter said, infectious kind of love and laughter, he loved people. And so when he interacted with people, you felt that it was real. It wasn't anything that was religious and, and too holy and all that kind of stuff. He really, really loved people and people loved him. And I think uh, for me, hearing part of the song that he written, that he wrote, which I had known that long time ago, he, he wouldn't have gotten out of here without singing some of his songs or one of his songs. I want his friends to know that, okay. Uh, but I heard these words, it's out of my hands. It's out of my hands. And I think that once you've gone through things and Dr. Tree or Tree as we call her, talked about the struggles and being an example of how God gives you a second chance, you know, uh, to do, to fulfill your purpose or to walk in the light that he has for you because you do have lives to touch. But we have to realize that, come to recognize that that is out of our hands. You know, when we, our, our life is hid with Christ and God. And even though it's out of our hands, we can put our hand in his and get the mind of the Lord and get in the will of God, get in sync with God, the Holy Spirit, and fulfill what God has wanted us to do in our lives. And Herman was just that kind of guy. He really was. Uh, when Tree talked about the struggle of being his pastor and his friend who loved him, being aware of his struggle, being aware of some of the things that he might have gone through, but I always saw his heart. I always saw his love for God. He loved God. And I have said a lot of times that a person can love God and still be dealing with their mind and their flesh and old habits, but they love God. And that was what was so evident. And so as a warrior and a watchman, as an intercessor, you know what I mean? And I was saying last week, put uh, over there in the intercessory prayer room, he was as effective there as he ever was any place else. I mean, as a powerful teacher, he was effective. So for me, uh, my heart uh, misses him because he was a type of pastor and teacher that picked up on things. When he got a revelation, he was going to drill it in again and again and again. He reminded me of my first teacher, and I just uh, 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 did his service yesterday, Apostle Frederick Casey Price. He reminded me in this sense that if he got the revelation, he's going to say it to you again and again and again until you you get it. You're going to get what he's saying. And it was a few years ago that this was our theme for our anniversary. I gave this theme, and it reads like this. Thus saith the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster, and one saith, destroy it not, for a blessing is in it. So will I do for my servant's sake, that I may not destroy them all. With that, when he took that and prayed on one of our anniversary meetings, and this was the theme. It got in his spirit. It got so in his spirit that every time he came to the mic, every time he prayed, he would say that the new wine is in the cluster. The new wine is in the cluster. The new wine is in the cluster. The unity is in the cluster. And I remember it was someone, I think it was uh, Daryl, uh, that, that took a picture of a big cluster of grapes, and big purple grapes, and uh, it's around here someplace, and, and, and framed it or whatever to remind us 
But even if I didn't have that visual, I had what Herman knew that he got because he was a man of unity. He and Elizabeth stand flat-footed in front of the congregation every time they stood before the congregation, transparent, total and absolute transparency. And so that transparency gave us a look into their lives. And we laughed with them and we cried with them and just rejoiced with them in all the things that they had experienced. But what kept them together and what we got from her and Aunt Elizabeth was the lesson that the Holy Spirit taught them. And that was 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And that is the love chapter. And whatever he did, he did it because of love. And whatever he said, when he said the blessing is in the cluster. And I'm telling you, that has been enthralled into the minds of Bible enrichment ever since that church anniversary. I think also what is important uh, for me to say is that he and Elizabeth serving together, you know what I mean? I know she's gonna miss her friend. Her, she called him her prayer partner. And I miss that belly laugh. He just laughed, kept us all laughing. And I found out that he came from a laughing family that they laugh all the time. Herman is full of jokes. But even when he had nicknames and pet names and said this and that, one of the things that I was looking forward to is racing him around the church. Because at the time, I had a really bad left knee, and uh, Tree had to remind him not to do too much. She said, Apostle Daddy's trying to do too much, you know, because he just didn't want to stand still, but he wasn't supposed to exert himself. And he was over there, you know, almost like, ooh, like he's ready to run. I would look over here like, Tree, Daddy, don't, don't overdo it. But he wanted so bad, so bad to run around that church again. Run. And then COVID came. <laughs> so we're not even in the church. And so I guess it was a time for him to run around the church because I was going to race him around the church. So we had this thing going. So now I did get my knee redone, okay? And so when I'm ready to race him around the church, he done ran on the glory. I said, boy, shoot, I'll see you when I get there. So I'm just proud of him. He was easy to mentor and to lead. So much of him was already committed to Christ before he even got to Bible enrichment. He already knew the love of God. And he also knew this. I think when people know their own struggle and that God has been gracious, they're not judgmental of other people. In other words, they say, go by the grace of God, by the grace. A lot of us say, by the grace of God, there go I. That means like that, I, 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 you know, that passed me by, you know, I didn't have to bite that bullet. But for Herman, he knew about the second chances. He knew about God. And when he and Elizabeth shared things with us, let me tell you something about the Bible and Richmond. We don't, uh, we're from people, we, we, we're real. We're kind of like grassroots people. You know, a lot of us know the streets and come from the streets. So we can identify with where Herman was. And we can identify with Elizabeth. Now, Elizabeth surprised us, okay? Because we can see Herman going off. <laughs> we can see Herman. Because he told us about his person and what he would do it. But when we heard Elizabeth tell us, then we said, whoa, now we see. See, now her Elizabeth is not this little sweet, quiet country girl after all. You know, old sweet Elizabeth that can hit those high notes and sing like the angels. But I think together, they made sweet music. And I, am be, I will be forever, ever, ever thankful. The other thing that Herman was able to do, and all the pastors can attest to this, he had a revelation of what an apostle was. He had a revelation of what an apostle was. And I'll say that I haven't said that too many times about too many people, okay? And a lot of people in our house do understand it, but some don't, they really don't. He had a revelation of apostolic leadership. He had a revelation of apostolic government. He had a revelation of the apostolic and prophetic house. So whenever he would get up to teach or pray or exhort, he would pray over the apostolic house. And you look at any of his prayers and he would make sure that he covered the apostolic house, the apostle, he had that revelation, and that he would move into a place of the prophetic in terms of discernment and what he would say. Very explicit, very accurate, absolutely accurate, prophetically accurate with a capital A, accurate with three exclamation points behind it, accurate. And I loved and appreciated that because what you don't want to have to do as the pastor leader, uh, especially for the leaders, especially for the presbytery, 
It's trying to teach them again, 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 again. What is your role? What is my role? What is their role? You got to get that from the Holy Ghost. And if the Holy, if you don't get it from the Holy Ghost, it's not the Holy Ghost not teaching. It's you not listening. Herman listened. He listened. He hung on to every word. And sometimes he'd be sitting on my, and he'd like to sit on the end so that when he got ready to run, he didn't have to cross anybody on the edge of his seat. And it was wonderful. So I can see how he would have played second base. Because at second base or even the shortstop, between second and third, once they got to third base, you know, but then they're on their way home. Herman said, I'm going to stop this. He was a familiar with the adversary. No, you ain't even getting the third base. You know, you might have got, you got, you got the base one, but you're not getting past me. Okay, so I can see how he can play second base or even shortstop because that's what he would do. He would stand in the gap, make up the heads, but he had also the understanding that you just don't stand in the gap as prophets and as intercessors and watchmen and gatekeepers, especially prophets, you got to go up in the gaps. And Herman did that. And I attribute a lot of his, un, not just understanding of prayer, but the area of freedom uh, in the prayer room and freedom in prayer, a lot is attributed to Minister Pampa Thompson, you know, because she loved Herman and Herman loved Pampa. Okay, love Pampa. And so she talked to me, you know, about Herman. We knew and she knew. But God, God showed up and showed out in Herman's life like you would not believe. Aquaman, I don't know about Aquaman, but he did act like he could walk on water. You know, I don't know the Jedi and all that stuff that Tree talked about. She really gave a wonderful eulogy for her dad. A daddy's girl, loved her girl, loved, loved her, and she loved her dad. I'm thankful for this family. I'm thankful for Latonya, who just got to teach you one of our classes in the School of Theology. I'm so thankful uh, for Jakari that I've had the opportunity to teach and to talk to his amazing young minister. So I'm just looking at his fruit, the fruit in, in Pastor Herman's life, I'm looking at what he was able to do and cultivate in his life as the valedictorian, as a father, as a friend, as a person who struggled, as understanding that the new wine, the unity is in the cluster, do not destroy it. How he and Elizabeth went into Chino, uh, into women's prison, and they encouraged the women who were incarcerated. Some of them had been in there 20 years and 30 years. Some of them were lifers, but they came and they brought life to the women in prison, and they did that again and again and again. And it's just amazing to me amazing to me how they were able to serve so seamlessly because they did it with their heart. So Elizabeth, I want to say to you, girl, you know, uh, God will keep you laughing. He'll keep joy in your heart. When I talked to you the other day, I didn't, we didn't even talk about this because you had me laughing and you were with Herman's sister. She said, oh, they always laugh. The family laughs. I'm going to say to you, keep on laughing. Keep the joy uh, going with your family. I know you're going to miss him. He was a runner, maybe a hard dude to keep up with. Maybe some things like, you know, I'm talking about so that everybody knows that we all want a cord. We're not in the dark about this. By one of those doors, he knocked down. You know, one of those doors he knocked down. Or trying to keep him from knocking the door down. You know, all that kind of stuff. That's why I love him so much because he was transparent. And that, that humbled him. See, some people can do stuff and they're never broken from it. And after that, they never served God like a holy heart. He served God like he appreciated what God had done in his life and his family's life. He served God like he appreciated his family. He appreciated the church. He appreciated his pastor. But he had the revelation that not just that I care for his soul, but I walked him through that last, last, last course of his purpose. And that is a pastor, teacher, a prophetic, a prophet who's able to sing his message, sing every scripture, sing. And I'm glad he was raised in the church. I think it was a Baptist church where he learned to sing the way he did. I'm telling you, I didn't know he was part of a singing group. I should have known, but he could sing. Boy, could Herman sing. He would bring tears to my eyes. So I just wanted to say again, uh, uh, Elizabeth, we love you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Whatever time that you need, you know you have all the time. Whatever you're ready to go back and start serving or teaching, all you gotta do is let me know. That's that's whatever. Um, doesn't matter how long it is. I just love you. Want you to to just uh, enjoy uh, your in being in the presence of the Lord, knowing that your uh, your prayer partner, your buddy, you know, is on the other side. He's up there praying for you. 
but the intercessors reach out to you. I want to thank God for all the comments from uh, Pastor Joseph and from Minister Melissa in the name of Jesus and his friends. Uh, but I'm telling you, Tree, nobody could have done what you did by eulogizing your daddy in, in such a pure, beautiful way. I'm so extremely thankful and so extremely proud of you. And so in closing, I'd like to say that if we could live our life any, any way, if, if Herman, uh, Pastor Herman has been an example to any of us, if Pastor Elder Elizabeth has been a, an example to any of us, it would be 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Now, Melanie read that, Minister Melanie read that out of the Amplified. But even in the King James, though I speak with the tongues of men of angels that have not love, it profits me nothing. And so that's what Herman understand. And when God gave that chapter to Herman and Elizabeth, this is what you build your marriage on. This is what you build your life upon. This is what you build your family upon. Once you walk in that, there's no room for scuttle. There's no room for sarcasm. There's no room for anything except the adoration of Almighty God. And they adored the Lord. So come on, let us worship the Lord together. Come on, let us magnify Let's magnify the Lord. Magnify the Lord with me. Let us, let us, let us, let us rejoice. Let us exalt his name above all. And that was Herman. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh God. So back to the words of his song. The words of his song. It's out of my hands. And I just believe that when it was time, I know he fought and there were several battles he had. A battle here and a battle there and a battle there. Most of you know about that. But I think that final morning, that final day, that final afternoon, and Herman's looked up in the face of Jesus when they were working on him, hey, it's out of my hands. And I remember I heard a song years ago, years ago, and it's a song that ministered to me when I was going through a struggle. And the name of the song was called, It's in God's Hands Now. And I'm telling you, if we can look at our life, life and say, my life is in God's hands now. Do I trust him? Do I trust him enough? Do I trust him enough? Do I trust him enough? Teach me, O Lord, to number my days, that I apply my heart unto wisdom. And so Bible enrichment and fellow servants and leaders to the Presbytery, to the family, and also to all those that are out of town, to our moderator, to his friends, okay? Uh, his daddy might have been named Elijah, but he might have been Elijah, okay? He might have been. And I'm just so thankful that I had a part to play in walking him through the last mile of his journey. Valedictorian, yes, he was. Valedictorian, yes, he is. And I teased him. Uh, Terry Griffin sent me some pictures there that I thank her so much. She knew I was having a difficult time with this. I had a difficult time with Portia, with, with uh, Joanne, and with Essie, and with Dr. Bush, with my brother CD, and, and Wilkie, so many of the Presbyterian over the last 30 something years that have gone on, you know? Uh, but I guess it's just the pandemic and all this kind of stuff. It's just made it a really, really, really uh, different type of a time. But uh, I remember going to the house and sitting down with Herman and Elizabeth and praying. And he listened to every word. He listened to every word. And sometimes he just write it down. He just, what you say? Have to say that again? <laughs> Apostle, say that again? I mean, it's just amazing because he understand that the prophetic can work when you're not saying, thus saith the Lord. The prophetic just flows like you're talking to someone and you don't even know. You don't have to tell anybody. You don't have to tell anybody. You know what I mean? That, oh, I'm getting ready to be a, pro a prophetic now. It just flowed. It just flowed and just flowed. So I just want to, again, thank all the intercessors. I want to thank everyone here and Bible of Richmond that you know what it's like for God to give you a second chance, a third chance. And all I say to you is take advantage of being the righteousness of God in Christ. Take advantage of being able to stand in the presence of God as though sin never in the world. Think, take advantage of the fact that Jesus was raised from the dead for your justification so you would be declared not guilty. So you would be declared not guilty that you could stand in the power and presence of God and you can say, after all is said and done, it's out of my hands. I'll let my steps be ordered of the Lord. And I know he understands. So whatever is going on in your life, I want you to know that you know that you know that God knows and that God knows. 
God knows everything that's going on. And so, uh, Herman, huh, you're in a good place. Uh, Bible Richard loves you. We're going to miss you. Thank you to the intercessors. Thank you so, so much for carrying this ministry. Thank you for caring. Thank you for walking in love. Thank you for just letting the Lord order your steps in the name of Jesus. Thank you to the Presbytery. Thank you to all the ministers and all the directors, all the leadership, all the deacons in the name of Jesus. I'm so thankful to all the men that Herman led in prayer and just everyone. He was just an example to everyone. You know, so I've had some hard hits in the ministry from people that I love and, and lost and people that I thought I'd go up in the rapture with. Oh, I know I'm older than all of them, so I was going to be around for a long time, but I just felt like I had some more time with uh, Herman. I got time with Elizabeth and Tree and Latanya and Jacory. Now that I don't know, I know Jacory. Okay, uh, take advantage of these things. So to all of his family that I don't know, and uh, I just want to say thank you for Herman. Thank you. I want you to know that everything everybody said about him today is perfectly true. But it was said based upon him and Elizabeth's transparency about their own life when things were not so rosy rosy, when everything was not so peachy king, when things were very, very uh, dysfunctional. And everybody can say, but God, but God, but God, there go I in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we want to bless you and we thank you for Herman. We thank you for his life. We thank you for his love for you. We can see him now rejoicing, rejoicing, rejoicing in the spiritual fullness of your power, God. The spiritual fullness, fullness of your power as his family and as we that love him and loved him, Father, continue to thank you for the peace of God that passes all understanding. I saw his growth in the kingdom. And I saw him latch hold to understand. He had a clear understanding of kingdom. Thank you, Father. Thank you in the name of Jesus for that uh, 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 boast in his spirit and boast in his soul about how good you are, how good you are. And Father, no one can comfort us like you by your spirit. So we thank you, Lord Jesus. We just thank you for this time, for this service, for rejoicing. We thank you that your sheep know your voice, another voice they will not follow. And we honor you for every mother, every father, every grandmother that we take it to our knees and pray and we travail, travail again until Christ be formed and our babies, and our loved ones, in the name of Jesus. So we follow the way of truth and the way of God, for the Lord is our shepherd. We do not lack for any beneficial thing, and we honor you, Father, in Jesus' name. We walk in your holy reverence and your fear, and we thank you how you reveal yourself to us. So we thank you that the joy, the joy, the ever and overflowing joy, joy of the Lord that we experience through Pastor Herman, through Pastor Elizabeth, and we thank you for it. We thank you. We thank you, thank you so much for he has been a part of our lives. And I appreciate, Father, you confirming me, even the seal of my apostleship, by placing him in our ministry in the name of Jesus. Thank you, knowing all and knowing all things. But, Father, there's no one, no one that knows and loves him more. There's no name like the name of Jesus. So we lift our hands and we lift our hearts and we say that the new wine is in the cluster. The unity is in the cluster. Do not destroy, church. Do not destroy it in the name of Jesus. For those that are seeking healing and deliverance, for those who are dealing with things in their own life, in their own family, with their own losses, Father, I thank you and I praise you, Father, that you continue to show yourself strong and a supply of your goodness and greatness and the supply of your spirit as you continue to satisfy them and you continue to show them that we be man endure for the night but joy cometh in the morning. And so with divine preparation in all our lives for what it is that you call us all to do, like Herman, we will wait on you, God. We will wait on our ministry. We will wait. But while we're waiting, we will serve you in every capacity. We know how. With communion and fellowship with the Holy Ghost and with one another in the name of Jesus. So bless you, Father. Bless the Lord on my soul. Father, we remember you. Forget none of your benefits, none of your promises in the name of Jesus. And you are true. Have been true to Herman and Elizabeth and the Williams family. And we we thank you. We give you thanksgiving and praise for salvation, joy, and peace. We thank you and we praise you, Father, in the name of Jesus for just showing us, showing us your face, walking in that 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 that, that area of your presence significantly. And we thank you for a man of God who was accurate in the spirit, accurate in his heart, and so much of it is because he understood brokenness and restoration. 
brokenness and restoration. So we give you the thanksgiving, Father. We give you the praise for Herman's call and Herman's completion, that he is with you in the name of Jesus. We praise you and we thank you. God bless you all. God bless you. Be comforted with the word of God. Be comforted through prayer. Be comforted through one another. And as Herman has said, as the Holy Ghost has said, as I have said, as the psalmist has said, shoulder to shoulder, shield to shield. We stand together as a family of faith, as the kingdom of God around this nation, churches around this nation, not bound by walls and signs and titles, but bound together by the Holy Ghost, by the spirit of the living God, by the spirit of the living God, and face to faith, shoulder to shoulder, shield to shield. Thank you, Pastor Herman. Thank you, thank you, thank you for touching all of our lives, but you have never touched so many lives as the way you touch mine as a leader and as a friend and as someone that was going to beat you running around the church had we got the opportunity because I got a new me boy. I tore you up, but we'll never know that till we get the glory to glory. Thank you guys so much. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. If I forgot anybody, I left out anybody's name. Just just know that you're in my heart. You know in my heart. I couldn't say everyone's name, but you know who you are. Everyone that worked with him and, and prayed with him on the men, you know who you are. That went to the prison with him, you know who you are. Intercessors that know who you are. And knowing who uh, Pastor Herman was uh, just beholden to, you know, his debt was to the Lord not to man in Jesus' name. I'm going to turn you back over to our moderator and say, Lord, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you, Apostle Crawford, for those powerful words. So again, the one thing that resonates more than ever is that Pastor Herman was a man that, um, you know, it's not about perfection, but it's about progression, meaning that we progress and grow and his growth he also impacted others to grow as well, especially in Christ. And the heart he had is just evident through his children, um, through his ministry. So again, thank you so much for those powerful words. So right now we're going to go, because after that power, we're going to go right into um, listening words from Patricia Lathan and Sister Williams Young. Um, the sister and daughter as they begin to close us out. Thanks, Michelle. And uh, before my auntie comes, she's going to give the official thanks. So we're here in the house. We're at my sister's house in California. And I know during times like this, many times people want to see the family and make sure that we're all good. I want to tell you, this is a blessed home here in Cali where my sister, my stepmom and my dad were. Um, so I just want to thank everybody for taking the time to spend with us today. Um, this daddy was special and um, I loved him with all my heart. And I'm just thankful to have shared this moment with you all today. So love you guys. I have some crazy friends who they said I make them walk on water sometimes. So this was different for all of us, but they were amazing to just jump in and um, help us with this experience and you all too, to just uh, do something that we probably have never done before. Uh, but my auntie Pat is going to officially close us out. And then we're going to do, we're going to show you a, um, a video presentation to dad that um, one of our dear sister friends, Melanie did for our dad right after this. So just hold tight a few more minutes and pray that you all have a blessed, blessed remainder of your day. And thank you for your time today. Thank you, Tamika. On behalf of the family of Herman Lee Williams, <laughs> uh, we want to thank God and all of you, his ambassadors, for all the love you've shown during this difficult period in the midst of these trying times, your acts of kindness in the form of your prayers, your phone calls, text messages, your heartfelt words of encouragement, the beautiful floral arrangements. Uh, the, the wonderful food that you sent, uh, and your willingness to assist in the compilation of this memorial service are so very much appreciated. 
May God continue to bless and keep all of us safe. And if you desire to further reach out to the family of Herman, you can do so by mail via Bible Enrichment Fellowship International Church, 400 East Kelso Street, Inglewood, California, 90301. Again, thank you all and God bless. together. Everybody everywhere. I wonder if there's some seasoned saints out there that know how to worship God. I'm not talking about this patty cake mess. I'm talking about giving God the praise. Come on, here we go. Now rejoice. None on earth and move insane. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold a God's unchanging hand. You can take all your shit can. You can take it. Oh, your shit can. TC for real. Help me out, brother. Trust in him who will not leave you whatsoever ye may it, brother. bring. Come on. If our earthly uh -huh. friends forsaken, mm -hmm. still more closely to him cling. Yes. Now, come on. Hold on. Oh, hold on. That's all you have to do. Just hold on. Is the, is the container that holds the anointing. Amen. Paul said, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, have not the character of God, I'm like a sounding cymbal or a tinkling brass. I'm just, I'm just saying a whole lot of noise. He said, if I had the gift of prophecy, amen, that I could understand all mysteries, that I've had faith to move mountains, and though I give my body to be burned or give everything that I have to the poor and don't have love or the character of God, I am nothing. Glory to God. Woo, but we're here to raise the offering. <laughs> That's what they used to say in the Baptist church. We're going to raise. <laughs> we're going to raise the offering. Glory to God. But we're here today to receive the offering. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Amen. That just did my heart a whole lot of good. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. He's a strong deliverer. Glory be to God. And if you trust him, hallelujah, in the midst of the circumstance, in the midst of the situation, in the midst of the trial, in the midst of where you are, he'll bring you out. Not only will he bring you out, but he'll bring your children out. And he'll bring your children's children out. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory to God. That's why my heart is still with my mind. My soul, my heart belongs to you. Pray. 
God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I said, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. He's wonderful. Hallelujah. Healer. Jehovah Rapha. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I feel like blessing his name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He's Jehovah Nisi. He's the Lord, my banner. He's my protection. Glory be to God. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Jehovah Shalom. He's the Lord, my peace and my prosperity. Hallelujah. He's Jehovah Rohi. He's the Lord, my shepherd, and I shall not want. Glory be to God. Mandala, mandala, Prayer and meditation in the Word of God has to be a priority in our lives. Amen. Hear me, fathers. I said prayer and meditation in the Word must be a priority in our lives. Amen. Our commitment to these Christian disciplines must not falter. Amen. Our commitment to these disciplines here must not falter. Amen. The whole creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Amen. Even ourselves are waiting. We're waiting. We're groaning. Amen. We are, we're travailing with great expectation for the manifestation of true sonship. Amen. Glory to God. Now the Father God said to Abraham, amen, in chapter 17 in verse 1 in the book of Genesis, he told Abraham, he said, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Amen. I heard the Lord say, I everything on the Lamanda Lesibros la Cande, and the Lamanda Lesibros la Cande, and the Lamanda Lesibros la Canda la Cabrasta, oh, the Lamanda Lamanda Lesibros la Canda Lesibros la Canda, and the Lamanda 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 Hallelujah. Glory to your name. I almost got it, brother. Oh, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. Come on, saints. I will trust in the Lord until I die oh I will trust in the Lord oh, I will trust in the Lord oh yeah I will trust in the Lord till I 